A key element to many successful novels is its cast of vivid, compelling characters. Now, obviously not every good book needs to have well-written characters, but when I think about what makes a book my favorite, in large part it's due to its cast. Today I'm talking about character-driven fantasy books, and the difference between character-driven and plot-driven. Hopefully you'll be able to get some recommendations out of this video. So what makes a book character driven? Just because a book has incredibly deep and engaging characters does not mean that it's character driven. In most literary discussions, character driven fiction mostly has to do with the character's inner conflict and development and how their relationships with each other create most of the drama and tension in a given story. On the other side, we have plot driven stories, which are more so focused on the events surrounding the character. The main problems of the story are external, and while character choices affect the plot, they do not drive the plot. Now, plot-driven stories are actually more commonly seen in fiction, and one is not better than the other. Actually, the difference can be pretty tricky to spot sometimes. For instance, A Song of Ice and Fire has some of the most memorable characters in the history of fantasy, but it's completely plot-driven. George R. R. Martin has said in interviews that one reason why the series became so big is because he sets things up to happen in the plot, and then he needs to go back and fill in the extra scenes to make those things happen. So the plot is definitely the one that's guiding the story. I'd say it's the same thing with The Wheel of Time by Robert Jordan. It also has multiple points of view, but while Rand, Matt, Perrin, Nynaeve, and Moraine are all some of my favorite characters, it's the wheel that weaves the story, not the characters. Now a lot of books do fall into that gray area in between, so even some of the ones I'll be recommending are, are not entirely character driven, but they're worth the read anyway, because the characters are good. Now real quick, this video is sponsored by Skillshare, and I'm sure you know Skillshare by now. They are an online learning community for creative people, like, like me, and like you. Explore new skills, deepen your already existing passions, and get lost in creativity. On the topic of character driven, if you're a writer yourself, I have two classes that I'd recommend that have helped me. Writing character driven short stories by Eun Lee, and writing authentic fiction, How to Build a Belief character by Saba Tahir. Both give great tips on writing amazing characters. Now even if you're not a writer, you can find classes on Skillshare for pretty much any interest you can think of. Every human is born to create, and Skillshare is curated specifically for learning. They're always launching new premium classes, and there are no advertisements. So you can stay focused and ignore those weird wish advertisements, and instead follow wherever your creativity takes you. The first 1000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So you can start exploring your creativity today. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. It's also important to note that a character driven story does not mean there's no plot or that the plot isn't important. It means the plot arises out of who the main character is, who they interact with, and what they do. And by the end, the character has changed or grown in some significant way. Now let's get to some recommendations. I wanted to recommend at least one Brandon Sanderson book, but Sando is in general very plot focused, which I think authors tend to be when they create tons of intricate magic systems and a gigantic connected universe. I'd like to recommend the Stormlight Archive for this list, since its characters deal with a lot of inner turmoil and show tons of growth throughout the series. I feel like I've been able to relate to several of the characters and even have grown as a person myself by learning through them. But Stormlight is definitely plot based. The Mistborn trilogy would be my next choice. It's sort of in that gray area, as it's largely about Vin coming to terms with her position in the world, her self worth, and sense of belonging. Vin's inner world and her development are a strong element of the story, but it isn't the main thing driving the story. The events around her in this ash covered world and the cosmic forces at play are much more important than her growth. 
And as much as I love Vin, the characters in general aren't Mistborn's strong points. So instead of Sanderson, I'll raise you Scott Lynch. The Gentleman Bastards, this is a series that's in that grey area in between, but it's a series that's largely carried on the charisma of the main cast. It took me a good 50 pages or so to get into it, but once I did, The Lies of Locke Lamora secured a spot on my list of favorite books. Locke and company are a group of con artists that are part of the criminal underworld of the ancient city of Camor. There's a deadly mystery that's begun to haunt the city, and war is threatening to destroy the city's underworld that they call home. Now Locke is less of a fighter, and more of a thinker, who finds himself in situations where he often needs to fight. We see him plan and prepare, only for things to go horribly wrong. But Jean brings some of the muscle to the group, and together they make such a great team, and a lot of their growth is achieved through flashbacks from their earlier years. Their bromance is probably my favorite part of the book. There's a lot of other characters to like as well, but the series just wouldn't work without these two. Next is The Goblin Emperor by Catherine Addison. This is a story in which nothing really happens, but it's amazing. This is 100% court intrigue. We follow a half-goblin who suddenly becomes emperor when everyone ahead of him in the succession is killed all at once. And this awkward protagonist is thrown into a royal court with a thousand unwritten rules of etiquette. Now there's almost no action to speak of, but despite that, I could barely put the book down. The Goblin Emperor is focused on the main character Maya overcoming a crippling lack of confidence from growing up in isolation, and the reader is bewildered right along with Maya as he's taught lessons that build up the world and all of its intricate court politics. One thing I found really interesting is that Addison gives many of the people and places these dense, complicated names, so that we can experience what Maya is experiencing. Rather than telling or showing, she causes the reader to experience this ourselves, which I thought was pretty clever. It's not gonna be for everyone. You can't go into it expecting lots of action and magic, or really much of anything you typically see in a fantasy book. But if you want a character-driven story that's well-written and that's filled with courtly intrigue and an undercurrent of political commentary, then you should definitely give it a read. Now to take a hard curve and talk about a series that is filled with action, and also happens to be a strong example of a character-driven story. I'd say it has some of the best character work in fantasy. The First Law by Joe Abercrombie, specifically Book 1, The Blade Itself. Here we're introduced to a grey cast of characters that are very unlikable, but you're going to end up liking them despite this. There's the crippled torturer, Inquisitor Glockta. He's merciless, cunning, and cynical, and we get to know him through his inner monologue and sinister sense of humor. Honestly, it's an incredible accomplishment on Abercrombie's part that he's able to make us root for someone like Glockta. Next, there's Logan Ninefingers, a more complicated man than the brute he appears to be. He bears the scars of his past as clearly as the scars of Glockta's subjects. But he seeking amends for his past is what makes you root for him even more. And then there's Giselle, who's kind of an ass. He's a narcissist who looks down on people and is highly privileged, but he does go through a very satisfying character arc. Every character is deeply flawed, but Abercrombie has a way of writing even the worst of them in such a way that the reader can relate to their struggles and even root for them on some level. By the end of the first book, the plot is only really just beginning. Book one is almost entirely setting up the characters. And Abercrombie is a master at writing fascinating points of view. I would highly recommend the audiobooks narrated by Stephen Pacey because he does an amazing job at bringing these characters to life. Now I've heard that Blood Song by Anthony Ryan is very character driven, especially book one. I've also heard that the following books aren't really as good as book one. I haven't read this series yet, if you haven't noticed, so I can't really recommend it, but if you are looking for a character driven book, then that's an option. And then there's The Kingkiller Chronicle by Patrick Rothfuss. The series consists of The Name of the Wind, The Wise Man's Fear, and that's it. We're still waiting on the Doors of Stone to finish off this trilogy. This unfinished series is focused entirely on Quoth, an infamous arcanist and musician, not to mention, uh, Kingkiller, who's telling his story, we assume the true story, behind all the legendary events of his life. Kvothe's long list of talents are juxtaposed with his inability to control his temper, and to not mess everything up by doing dumb things. 
To quote Rothfuss, he's Super Saiyan smart in a lot of ways, but in many more important ways, he's a complete dumbo. This is what makes him a good character, not only because he's interesting to read, but because he causes his own narrative conflict. If you leave him alone long enough, he'll most likely hubris his life into a complete disaster. Oftentimes, he's his own villain, but I love him despite all of that, or maybe because of all of that. While the release date for the third book might not be coming anytime soon, I made a lot of theory and lore videos on this series if you want to check them out. The next and final recommendation is similar in that it's telling a story that's starting from early childhood, The Farseer Trilogy by Robin Hobb. I would call it the gold standard of character-driven narrative. Fitz Chivalry Farseer is the illegitimate son of a prince, and he's brought to the castle of Buckkeep to be raised by the stable master. But eventually he comes under scrutiny of the king, who decides to have him trained as an apprentice assassin. There's magic and dragons and all that, but none of that what matters, what matters is the life of Fitz, one of my favorite characters of all time. These books are about the small and large events that shape our future, of the people we shape and who in turn shape us, and about trying to find a place in a confusing and hostile world. It's about pain and loneliness. These books deserve so much more attention than they get. Fitz is a character that will forever stick with me. So those are some character-driven fantasy books. Now, there's probably a lot that I haven't read yet, so if you want to recommend me some, let me know in the comments, and, and who knows, maybe you'll recommend me my next favorite book. Anyway, if you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, check out my other videos, and hit that bell icon if you want to be notified for when I post the next video. Also, a big thank you to all my patrons over on Patreon. You may have noticed the new backdrop. From my last video, uh, the evacuation video, I have moved again since that video. Uh, and moving takes a lot out of you, but I finally got kind of a, a setup to film here. So this is gonna be the new backdrop until I'm able to go home. <laughs>